Hey Crafty Fam, it's Alex Vanover and welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make one of these awesome stained wooden signs. I remember when I was a brand new Cricut crafter, one of the biggest things I wanted to learn how to make was stained wooden signs, but I felt like there was a lot of steps and it was really confusing. So I made this tutorial for you from the perspective of a Cricut crafter. I am not an expert woodworker. However, over the years, I have made several of these stained wooden signs, so I'm going to show you a tutorial full of my tips and tricks that have worked for me over the years. So let's get started. So the first step to making your wooden sign is to start with sanding. I'm using a pre-sanded pine wood round from Lowe's, so I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of sanding, but here's some general information about sanding. So obviously the goal is to get the wood as smooth as possible. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. That's not really going to matter. You just want to get it smooth enough that the vinyl doesn't have as much trouble sticking as it does to raw wood. And the way that you do that is you're going to start with the coarsest or the lowest um, grit of sandpaper, and then you're going to work your way up to the finest coarse or grit of sandpaper, um, which is the highest number. So let's say, for example, if you have a pretty rough piece of wood, maybe you want to start with like 100 grit sandpaper, and then maybe you want to move to like 180 grit, and then maybe 220, and then you're going to finish on that finer grain of sandpaper. But like I said, since I'm using a pre-sanded wood round, I'm just going to do 180 grit sandpaper on mine to get off any rough spots. And then I'm going to um, sand around the sides as well. Now make sure that you always sand in the direction of the wood grain. And in retrospect, I probably could have gone backwards and gotten a little bit more around the sides. Um, mine ended up staying pretty rough, but that's not super important. Just a detail that I probably would have done. Um, and then once you're done with sanding, you want to make sure to wipe it off with a damp cloth to get rid of any dust before you move on to staining. So when it's time to stain, you always want to make sure that you're wearing nitrile gloves so that you don't stain your hands. I use Midwax stain in the color English Chestnut. That's my absolute favorite. And I open the lid to my stain always using a flathead screwdriver. Another thing that I found really handy is to use four two ounce portion cups underneath my sign so that I can prop it up and it makes it a lot easier to stain the sides. And it also allows a lot of airflow to help my, my sign dry really easily. Now you can find two ounce portion cups just at the grocery store. They're super, super easy to find. I like to use a lint-free rag like an old t-shirt when I stain. I kind of bunch it up and then I dip it in the stain and get it fairly saturated, but not so saturated that the cloth is dripping. Then you're just going to apply the stain in the direction of the wood grain. Try not to drip it like I do on my sign. And then you're going to pick up the wood round and stain all the way around the sides. Now the sides don't need to be super neat. They just want to make sure that they match the front of the sign. And then check and make sure that you didn't miss any spots. Then I like to prop mine up on my two ounce portion cups while it's drying before I move on to polyurethane. So when it's time to polyurethane, I really like the Minwax Polyurethane in Clear Satin. I prefer the least glossy polyurethane possible. And I also prefer to use foam brushes when doing my coats of polyurethane. That way you don't have to worry about any brush bristles falling out in your coat. So you kind of want to do a similar process to the way that you stain. You're just going to dip the foam brush into the polyurethane, but you don't want it to be oversaturated. So you want to wipe the excess off on the side of the can, and you're just going to wipe the polyurethane on in the direction of the wood grain. But you're going to see a fair number of bubbles in this coat, and that's okay. You can totally leave them until the next step. You don't want to spend a bunch of time going over the polyurethane thinking you're going to help the bubbles because that oftentimes just makes it worse. 
So the really important thing um, to note about this step is that you're basically sealing off a lot of the pores of the wood. Vinyl has a lot of trouble sticking to wood because it is so porous. And so we're actually going to seal the surface of the wood before applying the vinyl, but we're not going to worry about applying a seal over top of the vinyl because permanent adhesive vinyl is more than strong enough to hang onto the wood just fine, I mean, whether you're displaying it indoors or outdoors. So once you've applied your first coat of polyurethane, set it up on those two ounce portion cups and let it dry until it's no longer tacky. And I know in this step it's really hard to tell, but you can see in person where a lot of the bubbles have dried into my polyurethane um, after my first coat is completely dry. So now we're going to do the second coat of polyurethane and we're also going to use some steel wool to get rid of a lot of those bubbles. So you want to start using a really fine steel wool. I use the 4 odd or 4 zero steel wool that you can buy at Lowe's. And you're basically just going to grab a piece out of your bag and rub it along in the direction of the wood grain, very, very similar to staining. And that's really going to smooth out the surface and smooth out a lot of those bubbles. Gonna, after you're done, be sure to wipe off the little steel wool dust pieces that are going to be all over your piece. It is a little bit of a messy um, step. And then you're going to apply a second coat of polyurethane exactly the way that you applied the first coat. It doesn't need to be super thick. It just needs to coat everything over really, really well. I also did not wear gloves in the first coat of polyurethane, but I highly recommend that you do because um, I got some polyurethane on my hands and it's super sticky and a pain. So be sure to wear gloves. <laughs> and then make sure to check the glare of the wet polyurethane so that you can see any areas on the surface that you missed. And then you're going to set it aside to dry before moving on to the vinyl step. So next it's time to apply your vinyl to your wooden sign. And the way that you're going to do that is using the hinge method. And so to start with the hinge method, you're going to go ahead and choose your decal, cut it out and weed away all the excess and then apply transfer tape just like you normally would. Then you want to leave the backing on, but you want to trim away a lot of the areas around the backing, just around the vinyl decal so that you can see as much as possible. Then you want to place that decal on your wood sign wherever you like it and find the perfect spot. And then once you do, you're going to take some painter's tape and you're going to lay painter's tape down around the or excuse me, across the center of your decal and stick it down. This is going to allow you to be able to pull back one side of the transfer tape. You can cut away the vinyl backing and then you can use a squeegee to push down the transfer tape and get as few bubbles as possible. And then once that is done, you can remove the painter's tape and you can go ahead and peel back the remaining backing. And then you want to apply that side the same way using your squeegee and just pushing it down nice and slowly so you get as few few bubbles as possible. Then you want to burnish the whole sign with your squeegee before removing that transfer tape. And then you can use the hinge method again if you have several other layers. Um, the hinge method is great for exact placement and getting things just exactly where you want them. It also makes large decals a lot easier to handle because you're a lot less likely to get bubbles than if you were applying the decal in one huge sheet. And then once your vinyl is applied, your wooden sign is all ready to go. If you end up making a stained wooden sign or anything from any of my tutorials, I would love to see your work. So please be sure to tag me if you post it on social media. You can find me on most platforms at DIY Alex Vanover, and I'll also put all the links in the description for all my social media accounts in case you want to follow me on any other platforms. And if you haven't already, please click right here to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel, scroll down just a little bit and ring the bell, and then select all notifications from the drop down menu so you never miss when I upload a new video Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I hope we can craft again soon.